What'd you do, Lawrence? I made a boo boo. Oh. Ugh, it'll buff out. down at the Circle K and um, well Todd mentioned something about making sure that the rovers were in the right position so that we had a winch on either side of them which leads me to believe that this might be a dicey ass day This used to be a road that only a two-wheel drive came up and the guy who was up here that needed to come up here with his two-wheel drive all the time put some rug out here and it's shag so I made the joke about it being from the 70s we're gonna see some of it right here uh oh there's a hoppy Todd right here Carpeting. And a Rubicon going crazy. Maybe this is that point where I'm gonna regret making a joke? Nah, the disc won't make it. After Lawrence got done giving us a master class in Discovery 2 traction control usage, John and Kyle made it look easy, and we had the whole gang back together and headed on our way up the hill. Everything looked kinda easy from here. But we got to another spot where Todd said, hey, I wanna get your drone out.
short while later, we came across the reason to be thankful I'd only bent one fender. Not that long ago, a jeeper didn't fare as well through this section. Todd told us the jeep was still down there. For some strange reason, though, we didn't really feel like going and looking for it. When we made it to the bottom of the draw, we set about assessing the toll the trail had taken on the disco. What I thought was a cowbell turned out to be the front differential counterweight, dangling under the truck after it had been sheared from its mount by a rock. After we straightened the sheet metal out, we went ahead and pulled what was left of the side pod brackets off the rear bumper. That way, it would be easier for the disco to show off its newly acquired Darlington stripe. You can't get into that, I don't know. No. Oh, no. Oh, that's all right. We have... Oh, did you bring swivel heads in an extension? I have little guys. Oh. I'll just get a little quarter dude on it. Oh, okay. Go in. Are you too good for your own? So this is like a tradition. Yeah. I end up usually like hauling back pieces of the rover <laughs> in the trash can. Soon we were back at it, climbing up the other side. This time, we were a bit more careful and tried not to do any more body damage. When we hit the top, Lawrence and I were feeling pretty proud of ourselves. It wasn't because we just made it through a section of trail supposedly requiring 33s and an axle locker. It was because of this. show couldn't get any more fun we just had lunch it's a nice spot for lunch we stopped we ate had a good time and then well some shit happened we got halfway down this hill John radioed up to me to tell me that um, asked if I had left my camera on my bumper no I didn't leave my camera on my bumper left my cell phone in the drone controller uh, the drone controller still looks like it fires up. I don't know if it connects to the drone or not, but my cell phone is shattered. Toast. So we are droneless now for the rest of this trip. Did you hear that? That was the springs dislocating and relocating with them cones. Glad I put those on. So, back to it. Smoking them tires, Bring buddy. Oh, holy cow, Arts. That was fun. After a little while, the trail got quite a bit better. Eventually, we came to some old mining ruins. Is it open? Yeah. Oh, son of a bitch, they already took the loot. Todd knocked the tree down. <laughs> now he's going to pull it out. He pulled it off with all the stuff on the top of his roof. <laughs> oh, he's got a camera in that, I forgot. You got a camera? You're probably gonna have to hook him up though because he didn't want to crawl through that cactus. Oh, kinda got a cactus. Yeah, he's hooking you up, don't worry about it. Just to the D ring on that. Did you lose anything? No, I didn't. <laughs> Just the tree. 
Alright. Hit it. I'll watch from the safety of right here. Who do you think wins, Lawrence? The stick. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Just keep on going, Todd. <laughs> Just keep going. That is the cost of making films. Damn. At least we made it to camp. Now let's throw everything out. When the morning came, we took a better look at the previous day's damage. So your old rover can do it. It's just gonna take some damage until you figure out it. What'd you do, Lawrence? I made a boo-boo. Oh. Ugh, it'll buff out. At least you still got your mud flap. <laughs> it survived. Yeah. My tailpipe too. Oh. <laughs> rover damage. Got a nice bounce to it now too. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take a closer look at that. You got some scraping up here. Ooh. Uh the bumper did its job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know, dude. <laughs> mine mine has the same kind of uptick. Yeah, all of a it's, sudden it's, it's got the same the same turn to it. was a trip. Uh, I mean, wow. That is the most insane, roughest trip I have ever taken in this room. And yeah, she took some damage and she took some knocks, but as you can see, we're still rolling. Um, we're finishing up the last bit of dirt to get us back to a pavement and a highway and head home. Give me a in the next mile or two. Copy that. Pay it in the next mile or two. That'll be nice. So Lawrence and I split off from Todd and John. We're heading back a different way because uh, instead of going down to Wilcox and then having to run back I-10 with these old rovers, we're going to take the back highway. Cruise at a speed that's more rover friendly. Because let's face it, these things weren't designed to go down a motorway or a freeway at 75 miles an hour. So. When you gotta go put them on the interstate, you get to hang out in the right lane and get passed by trucks left and right, and have the wind blow you all over the place, and it's just not my thing. So we're gonna take the scenic way. Very pleased though, very pleased with the rover. Uh, the Land Rover has come quite a long way, and 
yeah, like I said, we took some knocks, we learned some lessons. There are some things that I'm going to have to do before we do any more extreme trips like this. Um, top of my list, I'm thinking of differential guards and probably a skid plate for the fuel tank. Um, if we're going to be playing with those kind of rocks and maybe even some rock sliders and a rear bumper. I don't want to have to put those things on here, but seeing how things went with this trip, I feel like if we continue to go this route or go on these kind of trips, we're going to need it. Not having a rooftop tent on the top was a huge, 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 huge help this trip. I can't say enough how nice it was not having that weight up there because I think if I would had the rooftop tent on there, at a certain point, we may have had a tip over. It has been reached. We are at the pavement, which means it's time to air up and head back down the paved road. Until next time, I'm Matt Kester. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Brugal Explorer Dad. Check out the channel on Instagram at Secondhand Overland and on the Facebook group. And don't forget, get your merch. It's www.secondhandoverland.net. Support the show. All right, I gotta go. Lawrence is airing up with a Ryobi and I need to get my air compressor out. Till next time, be good.